Good morning. Now, over the last couple of weeks, I've spoken to the uh, movie reviewer Van Connor, or as he's now known as Nostravanmus, because he did predict uh, a movie called Parasite might do okay at the Oscars. And last week, he also predicted a movie called Sonic the Hedgehog might do pretty good in his first week out. Van, the biggest grossing video game based movie. Is it of all time or the second best? I don't know, actually, offhand. I've not tried the, the stats on that. There have been some pretty big ones if you look at something like Rampage, but I think Sonic's got such brand recognition that it'd be hard to top that. Still haven't been. It's my determined to go and see Sonic this week. We've got two years until Mario, so, you know, he's got the champ for a while. Oh, no. Leave him alone. Leave Mario alone. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's get back to what's happening this week. Um, a very busy week um, when we look at... It's kind of that weird thing where there, it's not the throw away movies they do in the winter time nor is it the big summer blockbusters of the summertime it's the weird bit in the middle now aren't we that's it it's a, traditionally this usually uh, turns out to be something of a, a, of a weird period between the awards season and the blockbuster season it's limbo land for just another month or two right what have we got coming out talk me through Call of the Wild new movie from Chris Sanders who's making his uh, live action debut on this he directed uh, How to Train Your Dragon he directed The Croods uh, this is an adaptation of Jack London's 1903 novel the story of buck spoilt dog of a, uh, of a of a judge who is sold into uh, servitude effectively by dog nappers and sent to the yukon during the gold rush where he starts out as a sled dog for the u.s mail service it's just sort of pre-telegram and uh, winds up in the eventual care of uh, a curmudgeon played by harrison ford i've got a clip for you of uh, the dynamic that emerges between these two wayward souls harrison ford curmudgeon never the Yukon is a dangerous place. You never know what's coming. I came up here because I didn't want to be around anyone. And then I met Buck. He was a dog like no other. He'd been spoiled. Come on, Buck. And he'd suffered. Come on. Could not be broken. I don't know, Van. I feel like he's just cashing the check here. Is uh, <laughs> is our good friend? The thing with Harrison Ford is, like you say, you know, Harrison Ford playing a curmudgeon. How out of character! And he does spend the majority of this film wagging his finger at people and saying, "Be nice to this dog," you know, in that way that he does. It is a very charming film, and it is very sweet. It moved me to tears on a good half dozen ah. occasions. But I, you know, I'm, I'm a dog person, and I'm a sucker for you know a dog movie. Visually, it's quite interesting. Uh, the dog himself, Buck, is a CG creation. It's been motion captured with an actual like a man in a motion suit so there's okay. literally footage in the world of Harrison Ford having to rub this grown man's belly as he rolls around on the ground it's very bizarre to watch it works the effects are a little weird on, on Buck but once you get past that the film is really okay. charming really sweet and it will win you over okay in this very building on this very station yesterday was Steve Coogan Steve Coogan was talking about his brand new movie it's called Greed let's play a quick clip you can't read the f- name of the f- shop it's white on white. In other words, it's on That is page one of the manual, isn't it? In fact, it's front cover of the book. Name recognition. Yeah. See, if you don't sort this out here, the writing is on the wall for you. Except it won't be white on white, it'll be red on brown. Do you know what those colours are for, Neil? Uh, is it blood and who? Yeah, correct. Well done. There's hope for you yet, Neil. This is positive reinforcement. This is me motivating you. And thank you very much to the man who operated the bleep machine during that as well. I'm looking forward to seeing this. I haven't seen it. And Steve Coogan was in great form on BBC Radio Manchester yesterday. He's very happy with this by the sounds of things. I can imagine so. And of course, Steve Coogan has something of an attachment to Manchester, having starred in 24-hour party people, with which he reunites with the director for this. So this is the director and star of 24-hour party people. And now they've taken their focus over to effectively Sir Philip green for this great big satire that's very biting as you can hear from that clip very foul mouthed very acerbic very sharp steve coogan's terrific in it it takes shots at the fast fashion industry it takes shots at reality television it takes shots at you know tax dodging corporate tycoons it's a really funny film it's got a hell of a cast david mitchell's in there uh, isla fisher sophie cooks and arza butterfield a really great movie i had such a ball with this i don't think it's as strong a film as 24 hour party people but then again 
again what is however i think if you're looking for a comedy that's going to have you falling out of your chair in laughter this weekend this is the one you see and very quickly like a boss the new movie sounds like this shame on your house wait wait firing you is not my idea i promise well, we wouldn't I've... even be here had you not pushed me into letting claire do a grab job on our company she saved our company which was about to go broke oh yeah and everything's so fantastic now no nothing's fantastic hey, hey, now hey, hey, hey. Witness my tragic moment. In about three sentences, tell me what this is and tell me if this is any good, Van. It's a female-driven comedy about uh, two best friends who are driven apart when their company gets bought out by a, by a corporate tycoon, played by Salma Hayek. It is so far the worst comedy of the year. <laughs> the tragic moment referred to in the clip would be the moment that you uh, you get out of this film and you realise you've just been had for 83 minutes, during which you won't have laughed once. It is abysmal. It's unfunny. It's very poorly written. It's not particularly engaging in any way, shape or form, and frankly, you won't be interested. And if you want more of that, Van, the podcast you're on is called Off Screen. Go to the Off Screen podcast, search for Van Connor. Van, as always, thank you for joining me this morning. A pleasure as always, sir. Lovely to have you on on BBC Radio Manchester. 